Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. This is another paid request for Greg B. Thank you for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics, commentaries, reviews, lists, randomness, reactions, or whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. <laughs> and this is for the film called Class Act from 1992, which stars Kid and Play. Now, Kid and Play were. Kid and Play was famous for like 15 minutes. I mean, they had a cartoon. They were like rap group. And then they got into comedies with House Party. And like I said, they were kind of a... Like, it'd probably be best to call a fad. A fad for a while. Because... Like, they had a cartoon that lasted one year, and then, from what I understand, NBC wanted them to do a TV show. And they said, no, you cancel the cartoon, we're not going to do a TV show. So then they did some movies. On the flip side, I believe they had offered, or a company had offered Will Smith and uh, Jazzy Jeff the movie House Party. And they said no. So, and they both got the opposite stuff. Will Smith got the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, that became that TV show. These guys got the House Party films, which they starred in the first three. The fourth one, for what I understand, the studio wanted them to be in it, but they wanted them to be kind of half co-stars, and uh, I think Immature, the band, wanted them to be more the leads. And they're like, I don't know, we just we don't have much control over this and feel like we'd be being used, I don't know. Even though they're offered like I don't know a million dollars to do it. But I mean they thought they'd be mismarketed, I don't know. And then later on they did like a house party five and they did cameos in that one. And I for understand there's a house party remake coming out later this year. I believe, so go figure. But yeah, Tin and Play, they, other than the three House Party films and then getting some cameo and stuff, this is really the only other film they did. And in the heyday, this is the only film they did that wasn't a House Party film. I would still say I liked House Party 1 and 3 more than this. But I would say I... This kind of came off as a better version of House Party 2. Because House Party 2, I was very mediocre, like, eh, very, uh... Blase on. I just and also that's a film where it's a lot to deal with school in that case college, and this isn't college; it's still school. But uh, Kid and Play, Christopher Kid plays a smart, nice guy named Duncan. Uh, uh, Christopher Play is this criminal named Blade. They go to the school. The files get accidentally switched. So people think the nerdy guy is the bully, and people think the bully the criminal guy is this smart genius. And of course, yeah, people would find out in five minutes, but this film is very much a live-action cartoon. I mean, the way the files just switch is... Play throws kid, and he's like, ooh, right into this big woman's bosoms. And the files, ah, then they're switched. And there's a lot of cartoonish stuff. I mean, there's some cartoon sound effects. Uh, there's a bit where this bully named Wedge wants to beat up, play, and say, oh, I'll meet you here. And the camera, like, go around through the school and go right to him. There's another piece where he's supposed to meet someone at Wood Shop, and he looks at the clock, and the clock is going like this, and you hear T minus three, two, one. It's very. If you're into that live action cartoon or stuff, this might not be a film you'd be into. Um, I wouldn't say I found a lot of hilarious stuff in this. I definitely found House Party 1 and 3 much more funny than this movie. I still think the first House Party is the best thing they've done. But. Kid and Play had good chemistry with each other. I would say this is definitely a film where they get to kind of interact the most compared to some of the other... Maybe this is still the first house party, but compared to the sequels, 
they seem to interact and go back and forth more in this compared to House Party 2 and 3, where they're kind of doing their own separate things. So it was nice to see much more of these two together as a team. And pretty much they, they decided to play these roles because Christopher Kidd wants to pass P.E., that's the only class he's failing, while uh, Play, part of his parole is he needs to get good grades, otherwise he gets put back in jail, or possible in jail. So, and then they're trying to teach the other, although it's more like Play teaching Kid how to be hip, like how to speak the lingo, like you don't hit on a girl, you be hitting on a bitch. Or, no, you gotta be fly. And kid to understand fly. So would I be, be fly on a plane? Or, like, how to use this fly? Like, he's thinking about it too much. Or, are you deaf? And plays like, yeah, I'm the deafest man on the block. That's because kid is thinking of D-E-A-F. And play is thinking of D-E-F. Like, that's kind of what is their sort of back and forth lingo. Well, it's much more about play making Kid more hip, more cool. He gets his buddies to beat up this boy to make people think Kid did it himself. <clears throat> Kid goes out for football and realizes he's a, he's a good field goal kicker. There are montages to, scene, to scenes with songs like MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This on the soundtrack. There's not a lot of kid making play uh, change. It's kind of like play does that bit on his own because he beats a girl as kid beats a girl too. But I would like to a bit more of that even where maybe kid teaches play how to do stuff and play has to pretend to be a, a bit more of a nerd. Play has to pretend to be a bit more of a dork. Play has to be a bit more of a goof. But that's not the case. It's more just kid... Him trying to be tough, trying to be cool, gets his hair cut, all this stuff. But play doesn't really change a whole lot. He, it's kind of, he always has to play it cool. He always has to play it straightforward. He just gets a little bit nicer. So I think there's some comedy, or potential comedy, left on the floor that maybe could have been utilized. The person that played Wedge, the bully, I think he's passed away since then. Uh, he was a fun foil for our lead characters. Uh, Polly Shore, I did not know Polly Shore was in this. But I guess, since this is around the time of films like Encino Man and other movies were being made, and at the time, Polly Shore was a thing on MTV. Some younger kids liked him on MTV. So they put him in here as doing the weasel. Hey, buddy. Hey, speaking. They don't know what the hell he's saying. They did the grindage. Which is true. I didn't know what the hell he was saying half the time, too. But pretty much he gets the kid in play to do this dance, this anti drug rally. Where they perform a rap song, of course. Just a kid and play. You gotta get some music in there. And when these two, at least another, there's some hygiene, silly stuff. Where kid is getting kidnapped and there's a car chase. And then the bad guys chase our good guys. Kid, play, their girlfriends. And Duddy Dud. I should mention, Duddy Dud is in this. Who will later be in Cool Runnings. Uh, hanging with the homeboys. Other stuff. But he's in this as... I have a guy, I think his name is Popsicle, and he's given Kid shit at first, but then starts to become his buddy. Pretty much trying to be the Martin Lawrence role that Martin was in House, house Party. Um, granted, Martin Lawrence did a better job, but I like Duddy Dud. I don't know what he's doing nowadays, but what is Duddy Dud doing nowadays? I have to look that up sometime, but I don't want to waste people's time. Other recognizable people, Misha Taylor, may he rest in peace. He was on the TV show Designing Women. 
He was in Mannequin and Mannequin 2 as Hollywood. He plays the dad of Christopher Kidd Reed's character, who at first thinks Kidd is gay, his play says, oh, I'm going to take him out to the dance, and then at the end realizes that Kidd is having sex with a woman, and Misha's just so excited, oh, my son's straight. Oh, boy, was she stat. Stuff that would not fly today for a variety of reasons. <laughs> just people call the dad homophobic and uh, whatever. It's just a movie. And as I said, it's definitely a cartoonish type of movie that is not to be taken too seriously. I don't think it's that bad of a film. I don't think it's that awful of a film. But, uh, you know, I don't know if this is a film I would see again, but it was fine as a one-time watch. Like I said, I would say I liked it more than House Party 2. Does How Par House Party 2 feel like it, it was a comedy, then it tried to get a bit more serious in these dramatic little moments and details of suppression of African Americans in America, and I'm like, Okay, I did it, but at the same time, you do re remember this is a goofy, cartoonish comedy, right? This at least didn't do that. It was pretty consistent in, in its tone. And it kind of, for a ton of its, like, random scenes of your kid being in this situation, or play trying to hit on this girl... And like I said, I, w I won't say there's no story, just other than the setup, there's not much of a story going in the middle until the end of the film where some actual stuff happens. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest asset is, is especially kid and play. If you don't care about them at all and they do nothing for you, then this film will do nothing for you. If you're a fan of them, if you like them in House Party and such, this Prince and the Pauper type of storyline, it's, like I said, it's entertaining enough for what it is. It's not too long, doesn't feel too over, uh, overstaying its welcome. Another person I recognize was uh, Rick Dukeman. Who I remember, he was the buddy Art and the Burbs. He's the one telling Tom Hanks, You're Ray, you're chanting, you're chanting. I'm going to kill everyone. Satan's good. Satan's our pal. He's the one with the bone. He goes, Ray, this is Walter. Ah! He's screaming with Tom Hanks. That's Rick Dukeman. He's been in other stuff too. He had a bit role in Die Hard where he was forced to turn off the power to the building. He was a security guard that got attacked. And got the gremlin off him in Gremlins 2. He was in Groundhog Day in a bit role. In this he's a bit role as a parole officer. For Christopher Play Martin's uh, character. It wasn't soon after this where Kid and Play kind of went their separate ways. And like I said. You know, other than House Party 3. There wasn't really anything else until that cameo in that fifth house party film, and then that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, and I think this film did not do well at all, which I'm sure made the studio mad because they're like, well, damn, you know, you, you did these films. I guess other than the house party, people were not really interested in kid and play stuff. Or the kid and play train had been off the rails and people were off to other things. Like TV shows like Martin, First Prince of Bel-Air. Those became more successful than kid and play. So, I guess people were like, ah, you know, after house party they were kind of done with kid and play. It definitely seemed a bit tamer of a film compared to some of the house parties. Like, the house party seemed like it had a bit more language and a bit more sexual, things of that nature. And this is seemed a bit toned down compared to those. Maybe some people were not into that either. But 
And like I said, it, it was tolerable and a time waster because of kid and play. I thought they worked well together, like I said. So, overall, I didn't mind it for what it was. Like I said, the it was cool to sort of point to, oh yeah, wow, Polly Shore, Rick Dutyman, wow, Misha Taylor. It was kind of fun to do that and see, like, who else is in this? <laughs> but... Uh, other than that, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.